Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Peace be upon you. This is uh, Basim Shaban, Executive Director of American Islam. And thank you for joining us for another episode of 101 Muslim Stories. And today we have a special guest, Brother Angel. Um, he has a really nice story to tell us about you know, his journey to Islam. And we're going to get right into it. Uh, so, Brother Angel, thank you for joining us, taking the time out of your schedule to visit with us and tell us about your story uh, in coming into Islam. So what would you like to share about how you came into Islam, inshallah? Okay, so first and foremost, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah, and uh, thank you for having me. I, pre I greatly appreciate this opportunity. Um, so yeah, firstly, you know, uh, Islam, you know, Islam is, you know, what, what I love about Islam is, 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 is about submission, right? And when you submit yourself to the will of Allah, you know, the you know, you will understand that, you know, it, it, it don't take much but to just discipline yourself to such an extent where you're actually, you know, uh, you're actually, you know, giving Allah, you know, uh, his, due, his due favor. And um, and my journey to Islam, you know, is quite unique. Like like I tell most folks, you know, it's, uh, you know, I come from a background of, 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 you know, a lot of struggle. You know, of course, I'm the oldest out of six kids. Um, you know, my father's from, you know, his family's from Cuba, my mother's family is from Puerto Rico. And, uh, you know, I pretty much, I pretty much grew up in a household of six where, you know, of course, quite a, uh, it's quite dark, you know, of course you have, you know, domestic violence, foster care, you know, um, gangs, um, I was a former gang member of the Latin Kings. I became a Latin King member at the age of 15. And then, uh, uh at the age of 16, I did wind up serving some time, uh, almost three years, uh, for 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 a charge, and then uh, I, it was quite quite crazy because you know in prison is where I took my shahada in, in New York City, and you know while I was going through my phase in prison, you know constantly having to you know fight for survival in prison, you know I come across this uh, Muslim brother who I've never seen before. Uh, but, you know, he always says, yeah, I know who you are, I know who your family is, you know, I'm just, you know, quite, you know, I'm just quite confused because I've never seen his face before, you know, and, you know, with his, him being a witness to my struggles in prison, you know, of constantly fighting, you know, I guess it got to a point where, you know, he just kind of, you know, harassed me, you know, me to come to, to Juma on Friday. So I uh, I kind of denied him. I denied him multiple times on multiple occasions, and it just grew to a point where I just didn't want to hear his voice anymore. So I was like, all right, all right, I'll go, I'll go. And then um, yeah, so I just go on one Friday. I was a guest. I, I go with him, and you know, of course, you know, we're walking down the halls. You know, you know, we'll go along the lines of like, trust me, you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna regret this. You know what I mean? And uh, so you know, I go and. You know, Wallahi, I don't remember what was said during the khutbah, but I do remember the brother's name who gave the khutbah was Brother Hatim. And um, again, you know, I don't remember what was said during the khutbah, but uh, I I do know that when it came time to pray, the minute I saw how Muslims pray, you know what I mean? That is, that that's like, it, it was just like a wow factor. It was like a wow moment, you know? But to the point where, you know, I actually saw some birds uh, sitting on the branch, you know, actually prostrating in the same direction that the Muslims were praying. And, you know, it's just that that short moment, though, those seven to ten minutes, you know what I'm saying, of them praying after, you know, after the khutbah is when I want to know more about Islam. Because my perception about Islam prior, you know, to prison uh, or, excuse me, prior to my incarceration, you know, was through, of course, the media, especially after 9-11 happened. You know, I, I do remember, you know, being in junior high school in New York, back in Brooklyn, and uh, junior high school 258 uh, over in Best Eye, Brooklyn. And I do remember this brother named Muhammad. You know, I, used to I constantly bullied him, harassed him, and remember getting in trouble with the law, going to court for this and that. And, uh, you know, of course, when I took my sahada, and I, you know, pretty much... Uh, you know, dive deep into the books, you know, learning everything about Islam. And that's when I learned about Jesus, you know, alayhi salam. And uh, with, with Esau's story was just completely, it was so similar in such many ways. But where it came to a dead end was that in Islam, you know, of course, you know, you know, Islam doesn't believe in, in the Trinity. 
It doesn't believe that Isa is the son of God, nor that he is God himself. And when I've read that, mostly from Dr. Ahmadita, uh, from the late Dr. Ahmadita's material, um, I was just so stunned. And that made me crave more. I just kept reading and reading and reading, and just to the point where a lot of the older sheikhs in, in, in prison, they wouldn't just know me as like the brother of knowledge. You know, like, you know I was just constantly like reading a book. I would borrow a book and bring it right back. Sometimes I borrow like three to four books, you know what I mean? So, um, and I just kept going. I just kept reading and learning about everything from Salah to Ramadan to Zakat to Hajj to Tawheed, you know, to the Day of Judgment, who the uh, Dajjal was. And it's just everything. I wanted to learn so much. Um, and all while all this was happening, you know, I, I became a Muezzin in prison. Uh, I met another Hispanic Muslim brother for the first time. He was doing 30 years to life, but he was coming down to write his down and to, uh, to, to, to kind of get like a lesser sentence or to appeal. And, uh, and he was actually teaching me how to read Quran in Arabic, which is wild. Another Hispanic Muslim brother named Usman, brother Usman. And he was teaching me how to, how, you know, uh, the, the alphabets, you know, how to read Quran, the, the vowels and everything. And I was just like, I was really happy to see another Hispanic Muslim brother. That was just like the kicker for me. And uh, so, you know, after doing some time, you know, I noticed, well, not not really, I didn't notice. I kind of like found out uh, after I got home that a lot of the older Muslim brothers was actually looking out for me. See, because in, in Rikers Island, uh, gang members who are in the in a dormitory with their, I guess you could say their opposition, right? their enemies, right? They were pretty much joined Islam just for protection. Like they they just I'm a Muslim and you know just for like protection like nobody he won't get touched. But wouldn't practice Islam at all. Whereas I became Muslim and I was actually practicing practicing Islam to like the highest degree. Um I did not know that a lot of these older brothers, especially those who did like double digits in prison, were pretty much, you know, looking out for me. Like pretty much like sent the word or like Anybody that touches this brother right here, this Hispanic Muslim brother, you know, they're gonna have to answer to us. And and I didn't know that because I was just so deep into Islam, you know, so deep into just learning, you know, uh, Islam to the to such an extent. Well, I'm watching, you know, uh, I think it was like a, a somewhere in 1980s movies uh, uh, called the, the the Message or the Messenger or something like that. You know, a very old school movie about the about the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions, how you know about, about his history and so on and so forth. And that is just the more I kept learning, the more I fell in love with Islam. And I just, I'll never forget such an experience, you know, while I was in prison as a Muslim, because one, I never got to meet that brother ever again, even outside uh, of prison. I never got to see him again. But I, bu I did bump into so many people, you know, even the young brother in junior high school that I bullied, you know, when he saw me wear a kufi, you know, we, we you know, I didn't recognize him at first because he looked a little bit different with a mustache, but, you know, when he saw me, he instantly recognized me, and he called me out by my first name. He's like, Angel, is that you? And uh, I'm like, you know, who are you? He's like, yo, it's me, Muhammad from 258. And uh, and that's when I instantly remembered that I was just so ashamed and so embarrassed to see him, uh, but he was mostly, like, curious as to why I was wearing a kufi. And I was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm Muslim. And he's like, you are Muslim. You know, he, he goes, mashallah, like, I, he goes, to me, this is, today is wild. I can't wait to tell my parents because to think that somebody who was my bully in junior high school is now a Muslim brother. He goes, if anything, this actually strengthens my iman to, to, the, to the highest degree. And I got to meet another Muslim brother, you know, who we, before we were both Muslim, we were actually enemies and we, we became the best of brothers, you know. And, you know, and, and it's just all these things, you know, as a Muslim, as I'm experiencing, you know, it, it always served as a reminder because I was always God conscious, right? I was always God conscious, God conscious to, the, to the extent where I'm actually replaying everything that has happened to my life and uh, I'm applying everything about Islam into my life, it, which serves as a reminder, you know what I mean? And the words that uh, uh, the promise that Allah has made in the Quran is very, very few verses where Allah makes a promise. And one of those promises that he has made was for every hardship comes with ease. And he said that twice. And when I've read that and understood it, 
where, you know, yeah, throughout my struggles, you know, throughout growing up poor, growing up in a domestic violence household, uh, foster care, my troubles in foster care, the prison, the gangs, the fight, this constant struggle over and over and over to, to see that my life has now become easier, you know what I'm saying, by becoming a Muslim, by accepting Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and because of that, you know, I've, you know, I, even as a Muslim, you know, I still had some sort of a struggle, you know, because, you know, coming home from prison was quite, that was like the biggest challenge. And it was the biggest challenge to my dean because now that I'm free and I have, I have a lot of distractions, you know, I, you know, it, it was quite the, a bumpy road to try to get back straight to the dean, you know, and which brought me to Florida. And by leaving New York, I made the decision to leave New York because I wanted to be in an area where, you know, it wasn't like New York toxic. And many years later in Florida, I come across Masjid Rahim when I lived on Old Winter Garden. Um, and I'll pass by and I'm like, you know, let me, you know, every time I pass by the Masjid, I'm like, you know what, let me, let me get back on his team. Let, let me, let me, you know, open up the Quran and let me read the Hadiths and everything. Let me just, I, I, I feel like I'm missing something. And when I went back to, uh, not went back, when I first went to Masjid Rahim, uh, bumped into brother, brother Rahim, you know, may, you know, may Allah reward him, you know, I mean, for, 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 for his ease and everything. And, you know, he was the first Muslim brother that I met. We became best of friends and meeting the Imam for the first time that his, that I will never forget his khutbah and you know, hearing, hearing the khutbah for the first time at the Masjid Rahim was about not severing the ties of your parents, you know, and with such a struggle with my parents, you know, it, it made me realize that there's no way I'm going to enter Jannah without reestablishing those ties with my parents. And, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, I've, I've you know, everything is under the, uh, under the bridge, you know, with both my parents, everything is settled. I've, I've established, you know, such a great connection, with, especially with my mom, the most, you know, because of our shaky history, you know, again, the struggles, you know, so, you know, learning how to forgive because it's like, you know, I've, I've learned how to forgive, you know, I learned how to be, you know, merciful and being and trying to teach her Islam, but there's only so much I can say, you know, this is why, you know, of course, you know, moving towards the future, you know, Allah has blessed me with a wife. And I told my wife, I'm, I'm heavily depending on you to pretty much uh, show my mom what Islam is, you know, and it's, but it starts with us. And if she becomes a Muslim, even though she practices witchcraft, black magic, and so on and so forth, but if she can become a Muslim, then the rest of my brothers is going to look like, well, what is it so special about Islam that even mom became a Muslim, you know? And, you know, and then, you know, hopefully my dad can become a Muslim and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's just, it, it's such a journey that everything just surrounds itself from the belief in Allah, that Allah is his one. It, it, it just became so clear that the Quran, the Hadith, everything just became so clear. And, you know, and you know, you know that when everything becomes so clear and that Islam is the truth, where, you know, when you read the Quran, you have this 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 little light bulb moment where it's like ding, ding, ding. You know, it's like, why do I understand this much more than when I open up a Bible? You know what I'm saying? I can't really understand it. It's just something about the Quran, the words of Allah, especially especially in Arabic. It has such an eloquence, such a, a linguistic, you know, a philosophical, a philosophical, poetic way of just talking to your heart, talking to your soul. And, you know, it just, everything just makes sense. You know, it just makes sense. And, you know, because of Islam, you know, I would not be where I am today had it not been for that, such struggles and my choice in trusting that brother to come to Jumu'ah and, you know, accepting Islam. Alhamdulillah. So if, Angel, if you had to summarize Islam in one word, what would that be? Definitely submission. Submission is definitely the word I would summarize Islam. You know, okay. again, when you submit yourself to the will of Allah, you know, you, you, there can, nothing can go wrong. Like, it's like it gets to a point where you don't even fear death. And I mean that in a good way. You know, I'm just saying, you know, if you, if, if I was to die in a state of Islam, I, I, alhamdulillah, I, I'll, I'll be extremely happy. You know what I mean? Because my submission to the will of Allah is, is just by far, you know, one of the greatest. 
Very good. And then as we <clears throat> as we wrap up this uh, episode, thank you very much for sharing your story. Uh, last question: If Allah, mm-hmm. <clears throat> if you wanted Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to God Almighty to bless you with a superpower, what would that superpower mm-hmm. be? Oh man, it would have to be. <laughs> it would definitely have to be mind reading a telepath you know what I mean because sometimes uh, just being a bit nosy I just want to know what people think when I teach them about Islam and when I teach them about Islam I want to know what, what are their first thoughts when I teach them this you know what I mean when I give them dawah you know um, and you know again this is me being nosy <laughs> just want to know what they're thinking about <laughs> sure all right, good, good choice. Well, Angel, <laughs> uh, thank you very much for sharing your story, and we're very happy that you've chosen Islam uh, as a way of life, or as we say in the Muslim community, Islam chose you to be yeah. part of the Muslim community and to be on this path. So thank you very much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Well, uh, audience members, thank you very much for being part of this episode, for listening, for your attention. And as always, peace be upon you. Take care.